My name is Joshua Fernandez. I am a PGY1 neurology resident at UC Riverside, California. I matched in 2023, and I'm here to give you guys a uh, tutorial video about letters of recommendation. I'm sorry, by the way, that's a little late. My PGY1 year kind of started kicking up. I'm in my neurology block right now, and even though it's my block and the block I wanted, it is hard. It's such a huge learning curve and you learn so much in med school. You learn a lot when you study step one and step two, but actually like incorporating everything you learn and putting into practice and then coming up with like your own assessment and plan and not just coming up with it, but knowing that you're responsible for these choices for other people's lives and health. You know, it could be a little intimidating and it could be pretty daunting and you know, you're nervous because you want to make sure you make the right choices. So anyways, that's like a whole nother video. So we won't even talk about that because I got PTSD over that right now. So we're going to do something fun and those are the letters of recommendations. So you should obviously have some letters of recommendations or at least uh, have spoken to your authors about this so far. I would, you know, if this video is used for next season, as well or any seasons you know going forward try to like ask your author uh writers like a month or two beforehand you know somebody that you know that could vouch for you that way you know they have an idea that you know you want a letter from them or they you know they they are going to write a letter down the line and that way they can prepare and you know and they usually tend to monitor you just a little closer because they want to you know write a good letter recommendation obviously there's going to be some attendees who don't have time but if they like you, they will offer you the opportunity to write the letter yourself. And I could talk about that um, more later. So for like the number that you need, you need at least three letters of recommendation when you apply to residency. Um, for specialty specific, at least two. Two is very good for you. I'm sorry, that, that's bothering me. That should be closed. So specialty specific, you need to get at least two. So like for me, I did neurology, like I said earlier. I had two neurology letters of recommendation. I had my one neurologist from my internal medicine block, and then I had another neurologist that was a neuro IR that I did during my radiology block. I also got a third letter from a an author who I did an extensive amount of time with. It wasn't even a, uh, a planned elective. It was just a, something I did on the side. So I had my regular schedule uh, blocks for medical school and I got to know this uh, neuroradiologist or just radiologist in general with a background neurology. And I spent time with them when I wasn't at my clinic, you know, my required clinic, or even on days I had day off or after I finished clinic, I go visit him at his clinic and then we, I, we do some work like radiology readings um, and, and some other tests like biopsies, thyroid, breast, and I spent time with him. So he you know, wrote me a letter of recommendation as well. So you could, you could be creative in how you get letters of recommendation. They don't have to be you know, a, a qualified elective or some, an elective that's on your transcript. You can meet anyone you want, as long as that person knows you and can vouch for you and can talk about your character and your work ethic and as well as your knowledge. That way, you know, you have these professionals who have been in the, in the field forever for many years and they have an idea what it takes to be, you know, a qualified, respectable, empathetic doctor. And when they see you working hard, they can vouch for that. And the medical community is very small and they could, a good letter recommendation from almost any attendee is gonna go very far because everyone knows each other. You'll come to realize that the community is very small. So word of mouth, when it's good, it's good. When it's bad, everyone knows. So that's why be very careful, you know, how you interact with your colleagues and how you interact and, you know, represent yourself at the hospital because everyone talks and word gets around real fast. So like I said, it doesn't have to be a scheduled elective from your med school. You could create you know, your own connections, which is exactly what I did to gain some other letters of recommendation. My fourth letter of recommendation was from the chief of staff of my hospital and she was an anesthesiologist. So it didn't even have to be neurology at that point. So in your letter of recommendation, uh, let's see, what information do you give? I have a little like cheat sheet here to you know, help you guys out. So to, uh, for my letters, uh, authors, I gave them my CV. So pretty much like the same CV I used for ERAS, I gave it to them. 
with a little description of some things, you know, that I probably didn't put on the TV just to, you know, talk about myself, you know, and most authors want to know, you know, request that you brag a little bit. So that way they can brag about you. So it's okay to, you know, come off a little cocky, a little arrogant, but not too much. So that way they have some material to speak for you. And then based on the CV and the information they have and some of your life events and accomplishments, they could create a story from that with on top of the things that they know in person about you with your personality, your interactions, and how you take care of patients. And they create a story based on that. So the next thing that I think is very, very important is when you have the uh, letter authors uh, upload the letters, you do it, uh, there's a box that they check that says that you did not read it. That is very important. When program directors, now that I you know, know these program directors and I speak to them, it speaks volumes when they know that the letter was sent anonymously. So that way they know that you didn't tamper with it, you didn't, um, there was no bias in the letter. And they know that the person who wrote the letter or signed the letter is uh, true to their word about what they're saying in the letter about you. So make sure you sign the waiver that you did not read these letter recommendations because that makes your letter much, much stronger. Never upload your own letter. That's, that's definitely a no-no, okay? And then if you need to write your own letter, I think I've given like hundreds of people my letters of recommendations that I wrote. I wrote, uh, one, two, I wrote three, no, four layers of regulation. I applied to multiple specialties. I applied to neuro, I applied to internal medicine, I applied to radiology, but I wrote some letters of recommendation for myself, just like I said, because the uh, attendees were busy. But so if you guys need an example, just ask me and I can send it to you. But pretty much the gist of it is, you know, you want to introduce yourself or you want to introduce the medical student, which, you know, on behalf of the medical student, Josh Fernandez, which is me, this is the one I wrote. I write this letter of recommendation for your neurology program, blah, 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 blah. Josh rotated with me for six weeks, internal medicine, neurology, yada, yada, yada. And then you talk about the length of time. And then uh, during this time, you, uh, you mentioned like what the doctor did. Like I said, I can give you my letters of recommendation so you guys can actually take a look at it. And I think it'd be a waste of time for me to actually like say it verbatim. But if you guys need it, I, I, I'm all over Match a Residence uh, page. You could you know, find my uh, Instagram tag, uh, Dr. Stark 17 You could add me and then send me a DM that way. And I say add me because when you don't add me, and you send me a DM, it goes into like my spam box and I'm so busy, I forget to check the spam box. After my day of residency, I come home and I still have work. And of course, you have two kids and you know, it's very, very stressful and time management is tough. But, and I gotta have time to, you know, get some workout for myself. I can't be a fat doctor, I gotta be fit. I don't wanna read all this to you, but the gist of it is introduce the medical student introduce you as a writer, whoever it is that you're writing for, and then talk about some uh, examples that show what type of medical student you were, how you interacted with patients, what you did while you were in those rotations or what you did during your journey in medical school, and something that was eye-opening. One of my biggest points that I put in my letter recommendation was my ability to organize and uh, demonstrate good study skills and time management and a calm demeanor all while being a parent at home and a student at home and a student at work. I would, you know, that's multiple faces and to be able to balance that before residency was a good correlation to and prediction of what I would be in residency to be able to handle that stress load and that workload and be able to manage my time well. So by writing that in my letter of recommendation, I was letting the programs know that I'm capable of balancing and juggling many things at once and without you know falling apart and breaking under the pressure. So that was something I think I tried to make sure to uh, highlight in the letter of recommendation so that way when programs read it, they're like, okay, Josh Fernandez is capable of handling the pressure uh, at the next level after medical school when he gains a lot of responsibility because he does XYZ already at home with his family and at work and be able to study for step one and step two and still put himself in a position to be a competitive applicant. Because the whole thing is they're reading a lot of these papers and there's hundreds of applicants and you need to make sure that you you know stand out and you know separate yourself from the crowd. Everyone 
all these, let's just be honest, every letter recommendation is going to be a good, uh, a positive. There's no, no letter recommendation is going to talk about how bad a student was or when they were late or when they weren't paying attention or when they were on their phone. So they're all kind of the same. So you need something to make sure that it makes you stand out and you're not just a, another, oh, he's so good letter, right? You need something that makes you different and something that will, when they read it, they're like, I remember that letter recommendation. I remember that personal statement because it was a story and it makes me want to come back and read that story and learn more about this person. So I invite them out to interview so I can get to know them in person. So that's the whole thing. You really want to grasp these readers in that 30 seconds that they look at your, uh, your app application for, because it's very quick and they got a lot of things to do and a lot of applicants to go for. So you need, in those 30 seconds, you need to grab their attention. And um, lastly, uh, any advice to people who are struggling to get LORs or trouble with asking, you cannot be scared. When, when I say that you need to create your own connections and you need to be proactive, I really mean it. Like these doctors, you know, as busy as doctors are, doctors are, are most of them are type A personalities. So they like confidence. They like someone that comes up to them, especially surgeons. Like, I'm not a fan of surgeons, you know, that's just me. I had a horrible surgery rotation. I think surgery personalities are toxic. And that's in my opinion. But the one thing I do like about them is they are confident. And I think that, you know, is a good rep representation of a lot of medicine. So when you come up to them and tell them what you want and how you want it and what you're looking for, they respect you for that. Don't be timid. Don't be shy. Don't be that person that, you know, regrets not asking somebody a favor or uh, a letter of recommendation. So when it comes to, you know, putting yourself in the best position to succeed, you gotta take a step forward and, you know, face your fears, whether if it's, you know, talking to people or approaching people and you have to do it. You're not gonna get a letter of recommendation unless you ask. So you got it. no one's just gonna write one for you. So take a chance. If they say no, screw it. If they say no, then you just move on with your life. But you need to go forward and ask them for a letter of recommendation and let them know exactly what you want, when you want it, and you know, talk about the specialty that you're interested in. So like I said, anyone struggling to get LOR, personally, you need to get out of your comfort zone and go and grab it yourself. But that's my advice for the letter of recommendations. Um, be, be brave, be strong, be confident. This is your time to shine. Step one, step two, you study so hard and you have no idea what they're gonna put on the test. But now with these applications and the letter recommendation interviews, it's in your control now. You can create the narrative that you want. You can create the path and you can put yourself in the best position possible because literally everything that you do can be shown in the process. You know, when I, like I was saying, the example of step one, step two, you can study, you know, 30 different subjects and none of those subjects will show up on the test. But if you put a good personal statement, a good LOR, and a great interview come interview day that's going to show and that is completely in your control and you have an opportunity to really take advantage of this moment where you're actually in the pilot seat just be yourself talk be funny be playful show your human side and everything's going to be great remember you're dealing with strangers for the rest of your life and you need to be able to break the ice and make those strangers feel comfortable and to make them trust you that you can help them out. And it all starts right now with your applications and your interviews because it's gonna be the rest of your life and I promise you, it is so much fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. So, good luck to MASH 2024, to all of my students, the people that I know are in there and the ones that I have never met before. I wish you the best of luck and like, I'm an IMG, I will forever be an IMG. I will represent you guys always. I'll be here for you always. And I want you guys to have the best success because I think we are the best doctors out there. So congratulations, this is the final step. You're on the last lap and you guys are gonna do great. Uh, hit me up if you need any information and I wish you guys the best of luck and have a great night.